Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Well, without beating around the proverbial bush, the Academy and Glenn Thompson asked for me specifically to provide an introduction to Glenn's film. You're all here to see Glenn's new movie, Orcadia, a Fenris and Ragnar story. Well, they say he's getting old. They say he's losing it. But he's got the accolades. He knows the game. He doesn't need his legs because he can read it. He can read the game. My friends, let's hear it for Glenn Thompson and Daniel O'Dempsey and James Alexander McKenzie of Fenris Wolf and Ragnar Thorfinn. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I've never He's, met him before. Yeah. <laughs> Who's I'm not that quite guy? sure who that man was. And Hello. I don't know who invited him. It appears that the RSA and the National Gallery will let anybody in these days. Yeah, it's amazing. I don't so, but yeah, the, um, so, we're here for Arcadia today, a film that Glenn very lovingly put together. That's correct. Um, yep. And it's been waiting for what? It's been three years now? Yep. So three years in the waiting. 
it's been a long process. I'll yeah. Tell you. We um, we shot it back in 2018, I think, and the edit's taken a long time, and then COVID, and we wanted to do the screening. different versions as well, like... Iterations and iterations, yeah. and then finally with the, the show happening upstairs, we um, were able to get this lovely theatre space. Yeah, the opportunities are finally... Yeah, it's been good, so... Um, but yeah, I think, basically, to start things off, we're just going to introduce everybody, so yeah. do you want to just tell me a little bit about your, your practice yeah, and what so you get up to? I'm Daniel O'Dempsey, and I'm Ragnar Thorfinn, part of this uh, two 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 part piece. Um, yeah, I I'm from Liverpool, although I don't sound like a scouser, so don't like draw me up on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I my practice is quite like uh, diverse, I guess. I'm really quite into music, so I often have like kind of instrumentals or like kind of musical features, and always had sort of a lot of collaborating with people because. You know, the dynamics always worked really well. I think yeah, it's that's always worked. Like, that's why we've kind of... Yeah, totally. I mean, that's that, I can totally see that with, with you and James. It's like you're, you have this great energy that you bring when you're yeah. all together in a room. Slightly unhinged yeah. most, <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, so, I mean, in the film, that's, that's one of the big things I'm trying to sort of capture is, like, explaining that energy and showing the, the liveliness between you guys. Yeah. And, um, oh, oh, the oh, man of the God. hour is here now. So, oh, it's like, there's a guy. Be late for your own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get caught up in traffic? Yeah. It was a bit sticky on the Lillian Road, so. Oh, I'm here now. Well, nice, to, nice to nice see, see you. Nice to see you both. Yes, we go. Go. Lovely. Yeah, good. We just. Um, uh, yeah, we were just. We're just really. uh, Do you want to give a brief about yourself? Yeah. Uh, my name is James. Um, my work, I work in painting, poetry, installation. All this shit, you know. But um, <laughs> more recently, what I'm interested in is sort of stage acts, uh, which blend theatre, poetry, and spoken word, and stand up as well. Um, A lot of which will be on show tomorrow. So if yes, you guys are yes. kicking Act about, Act four of our play, Founders Wolf from mm -hmm. Ragnar Thorfinn. Let's also go. the name of our collective. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. So, like, I mean, obviously, you've come up with this name for a collective, but what is the the underlying story behind it and also like obviously that was kind of the name of the residency you guys went on so yeah. do you want to dive well, into that a little I bit? I guess well a lot of it so me and James used to live together mm -hmm. over a couple of years mm -hmm. and then we'd always you know we'd kind of shoot you know uh, I was going to say shoot the fish but that's not even a, <laughs> <laughs> a phrase so in the tape yeah. yeah we'd be shooting things we'd and, shoot um, but we'd like do a lot of poetry and we'd like film each other and like not in any sort of explicit ways and um, well. play a lot of music together. And that yeah. kind of inspired, you know, like, yep. I guess, the performative side of things. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I think the catalyst of our uh, working collaboratively, collectively. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we studied together. We all went to Duncan of Jordanston. Um, we lived together in Dock Street, Dundee, oh, yeah. the penthouse suite. And... Yeah, during that period, you know, we were hanging out a lot, and we were kind of engaged. We were doing different creative projects. We were I, Dan's quite an uh, exuberant character, uh, and I find him quite infectious. <laughs> his, Not too his bad yourself. Sort of sense of wonder I find quite infectious. So he would, he was you know a source of inspiration for me. Um, same with Glenn. Same with Glenn. Thank you very much. So I've I've kind of don't I'm much, I'm really more of a collage artist. I tend to... You termed this yesterday, I think. Yeah, I think I've decided I'm a collage artist now. So I tend to... <laughs> I use... I'm kind of, like, I have a lot of ghostwriters, really, in my work. Astrid over there, of course. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I appropriate things that people say, my friends, things that overhear, and then I kind of collage them. Um, and then through this kind of process of collage, uh, yeah, write sort of plays, poems. Yeah, this is where prose. I practice a sort of... And it also, if in terms of painting, I'll I'll put that in paintings. Yeah, these passages. Yeah, I think one of the things that's really cool about your work specifically is that oftentimes it stems from yeah conversations we've all had together or things like that. So when I'm it's quite when hysterical. I, yeah, when I hear it, when yeah. I hear a poem, society's bleeding me dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Dan said that one. Night. That was a big one. Well, yeah, when I'm hearing like poetry work from you guys or seeing paintings, it's it's always like it takes you back to like a, a moment yeah. and like little bits like little stories and so like obviously when you're saying a collage 
like with your paintings and stuff like that, there's like every single element of the painting is a little story in itself and it builds up yep. this big picture, which is so cool. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I try to sort of represent in the film is it's it's kind of like taking all of these little moments that we had together when we were on Orkney mm -hmm. and trying to build that, that same sort of collage mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. film to try yeah. and hopefully share that energy and mm -hmm. tell the story. Yeah. yeah. What, what is Fenris Wolf and Ragnar Thorfinn done? Um, well, it initially was, we kind of went in with the idea of like mythology. Mm -hmm. So we were like pretty into Neil Gaiman, you know, we love that, American gods all day. Yeah. We and read then Norse mythology. We saw it, but we kind of just looked at it as a vessel really, because we, we didn't really have a proper plan. We had like an idea and we just kind of wanted to have, I guess, like this umbrella where we just did the same stuff, which we always do, which is play. Yeah. Um, we wrote, we proposal was a, uh, quite specific. We said yeah. that we wanted to go to Orkney to write a play loosely drawing from Norse and Celtic mythology. Mm -hmm. um, that went in Roughly. varying degrees not very far, yeah. but <laughs> it went as far as the title, Fenris yeah, we Wolf got, and Ragnar Thorfinn. We got two Thorfinn. very good names out of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, initially, yeah, so Fenris Wolf, I read, well we both read Norse mythology. Yeah. Fenris Wolf is a Norse god, large wolf, very powerful, um, I just thought it was a great name, Fenris Wolf, so that was... And then sort one, of plucked one. Ragnar Thorfinn from... Yeah. Was looking at Orcadian mythology. Yeah. And then I think Thorfinn is a character in... There was... I can't remember... George Mackay Brown? Yeah, 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 it was a George Mackay Brown book. Orcadian writer. So yeah. We've done our homework. <laughs> we were there for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so then I think we... I don't know, we just kind of let it develop naturally. Yeah. Like it, well, there was no real structure. So we had... We had a, a proposal. We didn't necessarily do what we'd set out in the proposal, um, but we did well, a lot it's of because we kind of found that, that that way of working that didn't represent us, that didn't resonate with us. But what we did yeah. like was having the structure of a play. So we we kind of had the well, idea, the idea of, well, of acts in the performance yeah, side of it. Three different acts. Yeah, we had you know we have a, a title for a play, so we've got everything that constitutes a play. We just don't have a sort of We've got, we've got a shell, and so we filled the shell in, in ways that came naturally to us, in the ways that suited us. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys described that as, like, not play in the sense of, like, a play, but more sense of, like, Actually playing. playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and that, yeah. So, more like, with, with on, the, on the residency, so you guys were in Orkney for, for two months, um, like, kind of autumn time, and you spaced these three performances or plays yeah. through, the, through yeah. the duration of the two months. So, like... What was, the, what was the plan for each of them? Did you have like a, a set idea for each player? Well, I think the, the plan was to initially, so we would always start at the Peers Art Centre. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. that was like a bit more, it was a bit more planned, a bit more curated. So we ended up doing a selection of sort of previous work that we already had and then mm -hmm. collaged a couple of our own poems together and mm -hmm. had like a kind of more of a, that was more of a kind of theatrical performance where the two of us kind of joined yeah. arms and then kind of finished off. Mm -hmm. And we were... So we that were, was Act 1. Act, Act 1, one was at yeah. Pure Art Centre. And we are interested in sort of like, we wanted to kind of try and collaborate with a lot of musicians. So we, there was a fid local fiddle player. Mm -hmm. Eric Linklater. Yeah. Fantastic he was fiddler. Really, really lovely lad. Really lovely. Yeah. Yeah, well, Orkney was amazing in terms of that though. Yeah. The people, the community in Orkney were, yeah, really into engaging with us yeah, they were just and participating really, really in this project that we were doing. Yeah. And there was loads of resources as well. We got mute, we got instruments from a kind from of instrument bank. bank. Yeah. Um, we met loads of very, yeah, people just really were very generous to us and gave yeah. us time of day. And we, we had loads we, of encounters that were During the, because the first we, so when we first landed, we were there for a week in Grey's Noost yeah. and then we didn't have the cottage for two weeks. So then that sort of, was the catalyst for us to go and do yeah. the island hopping. So yeah. we went round various islands, went to Hoi, yep. went to back to mainland. Like the amount of cycling we did was insane. We could have done the Tour de France by the end of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Loads of cycling. And then went round to Westray, to Pape, Sanday. Sanday was a really interesting mm -hmm. moment because we got stranded uh, after sheet rain and 70 mile an hour winds. Mm -hmm. And they had to cancel the ferries, so then we were stuck there. An and angel came and rescued us and we had from the... Just such a, uh, you know, 
weird series of events, wasn't it? Because we got picked up That's right. and got looked after. We, yeah, well, we, we, just, we were in this sort of hut at the port. There was no ferry. Um, it had been cancelled because of this stormy weather. So we were just like, well, what, you know, what are we going to do? We're not going to go out in this horrendous weather. So we stuck in the hut. And we're kind of just, you know, skipping. killing time, skipping. We had a skipping rope. We're working out. We're fucking <laughs> getting pretty shredded. We were, yeah, and, um, did really well. Yeah, I think that's in the film actually. That, 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 you'll see, we'll yeah, we'll see some of these. Yeah. I, I think. Well, I think. I, I mean, there's a little bit of a so, but, going on uh, here. But I'm, what I'm, what we're trying to say is that the well, what we're trying to get to is that the fact that the film was only shot uh, two days o over a two-day yeah. period. So we're trying to set the scene a little bit here of like essentially all 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 of the run-up um, because the film is well, I think about around 50 yeah. minutes long, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's shot over two days. But what what was brilliant about this opening piece is that um, I give you a camera at the start of the trip and, and you use that extensively to, to document yeah. and you'll see upstairs in the gallery there's there's countless photos and video clips and everything so when it came to making the film it was amazing to have that archive already built up and yeah. I think what we're trying to do is just yeah sort of set the scene for like the well, plays about to happen yeah yeah essentially it was <laughs> about yeah, to happen yeah, yeah, so yeah. I feel like yeah. yeah like if you guys want to just describe a little bit about the run up to act two and then we can we can go into the film well, yeah, act, act two. Act so, two. Act, act one to round off act one. The <laughs> uh, <laughs> tangent continues. Uh, to Apologies. round off act one, that was uh, the sort of we sort of the role of director with each of these acts. Yeah, uh, rotated. So, with the first one, it was it was me that had kind of it was kind of my vision, I guess, yeah. to, to a certain extent. So, we had Eric Lindglater playing fiddle, and it was kind of. I would perform, I was performing these kind of existential monologues. I did one monologue and then Dan would do a monologue. Mine were kind of more brooding and like um, angsty and L Eric would play a kind of composition that was quite dissonant and brooding, which suited it, you know? Dan would then perform kind of more optimistic. A bit more rapid. A bit And a bit more, I don't know. Um, I think he's a hardcore. Artist. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good. And, but it, he played a more kind of, a jig, he played a jig yeah. to accompany it. And so it was like my monologue, Dan's monologue, and the, you know, the music was changing accordingly. And then finally it concluded with this dialogue where we kind of, our two characters um, Embrace. embraced. Yeah. And they kind of, and it was kind of this, um, it concluded with, a, so we had this kind of mental uh, meandering, meandering uh, dialogue, which concluded with us sort of chanting, burn the village, feel the warmth. Which, it, which was the name of an which exhibition in Orkney off the at the Coley. Pure Arts Centre by yeah. uh, Nathan Coley. Um, and that's kind of been something that's continued. We, we kind of, I quite enjoy poking, you know, poking fun at that. Yeah. Or like kind of humorously what, jabbing at Nathan trying Coley. Trying to get on Nathan's radar. Yes. Is Nathan here? So that's, can, no, that's sort of a staple yeah. in our practice now, really. <laughs> He's not turned up today. He's not, he didn't. And he didn't look at the yeah, messages. Yeah, he didn't, I don't, it's fine. He didn't open the messages. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a few things to say about that yeah. tomorrow. The, yeah, come to Act Four as well. Yeah. Our performance in the gallery is tomorrow. The fourth instalment of our play. Yeah, um, best one yet, probably. <laughs> but Act Two act was two. Dan took the role of director with that yeah, one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this one up quickly. But we so yeah, set the scene, and then we can set the scene. It was in film. initially we tried to do it in the school, but I think we had some complications. There was a holiday. We couldn't get in contact with people, and then. I kind of decided because I've always been interested in like space and I like building installations and sort of like playing outdoors and that's always been a thing. I like the kind of accessibility of like public spaces and stuff. Um, and so we decided to just, we literally bought like a huge piece of tarpaulin mm -hmm. and kind of transformed the basketball court because it had like this sort of amphitheater like quality because like it was set into the ground and then you could, you know, people could go up around the edges and look down into it. So it was perfect. It was like, you know, it was a proper spectacle. Yeah. And like then a we Coliseum. Just like, yeah, it was the, the Coliseum of Stromness. Stromness Coliseum. Oh, yeah. And, um, but it was good. Yeah, and, you know, we just kind of wrapped it up and it was like had more of a kind of musical element. So we had yeah. a flutist which we'd met called Claire Westrop, who was a really lovely lady. And she, we'd met her during our travels. And I think it was in Pape. Pape Westray, yeah, that's yeah. where we met her. And in we, we, got, like, we got the crack with her in the kitchen at the hostel and then you know, got her details, and then when we returned from our island hopping, we got in contact with her, yeah. and then she joined us for the performance, which yeah. is 
delightful. Yeah, just to reiterate yeah. that the, everyone was so accommodating. They wanted to participate in what we were doing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, um, so so when I when I arrived in Orkney, yeah. I think the performance was the next again day. So I'd, I was yeah. there just for like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday mm -hmm. to film whatever I could film. And so, yeah, going into that second act, it was literally like, all right, arrive, go to the pub, make a plan, and then come out <laughs> the next morning and just like go and film this thing. Yeah, bang it out. And uh, you guys did an amazing performance. So handled handled I, I business, think, did we? I think it seems like a good time to just run yeah. into the film. Shall and. We, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've been beating around we the bush say, for long yeah, enough. We the proverbial <laughs> bush. <laughs> been around the fully proverbial rinse. bush. Yeah, yeah so I we think probably want to should. film now. Anyway. We okay, well, enjoy, after. guys. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, everyone. there's an ephemerality with the work. It's not going to last. It has an element of mortality. Time is not infinite. So you have these wonderful, quite like whimsical moments that you can create. Anchoring yourself in the now, because that's all you really have. It's very easy to get distracted by what's going on in your mind and get taken away from that. And actually when you're more anchored in the moment and you're not thinking in this kind of state of non-mind, you're much more productive and you're much more free. And that definitely enables you to accomplish more. <laughs> yeah. My name is James Alexander Mackenzie. <laughs> I herald from Edinburgh. <laughs> I'm a painter working within the expanded field of painting. I'm Daniel William O'Dampsey. I'm from Liverpool. I'm a multimedia-based artist. And we're here in Stromneck pursuing a collaborative project together. We've been writing what we would call a subversive play. We got the grant awarded to us through the RSA Residencies in Scotland scheme. The play is made up by three acts, but the actual play itself just allows us to do what naturally comes to us with an artistic practice. Totally stoked. Can't believe it. There's a little more around toward me. Need to fix this, mate. <laughs> Oh, shit loads of maggots. I can't sit. Oh, no, we need to get this done, man. It's alright, I want to. That's just gross. <laughs> Fucking standing, like. We knew we wanted to go to an island, and also, given the experimental, subversive nature of our work, we felt like Orkney was the most likely to pursue us. It seems like they're the most progressive of the islands. I can't say that for sure. But that is totally the experience we've had, though. They've very much got a real can do attitude open-mindedness, and they're really willing and accommodating. There's like a kind of mental cleanse, just because you're so far away from the kind of like city lights and like concrete jungle, etc. Like it's just totally its own entity and identity. Yeah, it's just very peaceful. Like you feel the release of anxiety. You just don't, you're not stressed. And it's just, I think it's just very good for the soul and astonishingly wonderful place. I told you the other day when you arrived, I said that if I could sum up my experience of Orkney in a root vegetable and a nut, it would be in a neep and a peanut. <laughs> For the first couple of weeks of the trip, me and James decided we wanted to see as much of the Orcadian Isles as we could. This is episode one of Red, Red Light Radio. Radio. Ultimately, we want to kind of share some of our travels. Like we're, we're, we started in Hoi today, we're yeah. our second night. We last spoke to you when we were in Hoi. That was part one of our island hopping adventure and over part two, which is Papa Westray. Papa Westray, beautiful place, also very vibrant. So where are we today, Dan? Uh, we're on Sunday today. Sunday. This is uh, day three of Sunday. The fourth podcast is the fourth venue. Yeah. We are now in Rosie, which is our fourth island. It's really a sort of spiritual journey for us, being here and experiencing or pilgrimage. Yeah, it's pilgrimage, isn't it? Yeah. You could feel the kind of weights of these places. It's a totally different pace, the way people interact, the way time, time seems to 
Time seems to run at a different pace than ordinary, which is, it's, it, which is brilliant. So what have you been doing then, James? Cycling, bro. Cycling from Kirkwall to Strong Neck. Uh, I, ran, I ran for five miles as well this morning, Dad. You don't call? You don't text? Well, it looks a bit shallower, like. Uh, it's not too shallow, eh? Is it not? Nah, it's good, bro. Yeah, man! <laughs> How is it? Yeah. Boss. That's it. Cute, bro. The play. Our play, the reason we're here, which was to come to Orkney to write a play loosely based on Norse and Celtic mythology. There will be three acts. First act will be a public performance, spoken word, me and Dan both performing. And then act two will be a more musical venture. And it's been two weeks, we landed, and you speaking, seem dropping the ball, yeah, metaphorically speaking. So we'll have local musicians play and the beauties of Orkney. We've already uh, bumped into a delightful girl in the hostel called Claire who plays the flute. Yes, she and was lovely. She was very nice. Gave us sweet potatoes and onions. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Claire. And then at three, a sort of combination of both. I'm going home as we bathe in city lights and lampposts flicker. Please take me home. The things I find I'm most fascinated in is creating spaces which create a sense of wonder or curiosity. I love the ordinary and insignificant because I think if you take something from one space to another, remove it from its right environment to an alienated one, it manifests like this new significance and like understanding. You can have like the basketball court we set up the other day. We put some carpets, a tent, some tarpaulin, and suddenly we transformed it into this. Theatre stage. When we sat on the precipice, he said, Jim sat up on God, he's almost great. And how people interact might be slightly perplexed, but enjoying like the alienation of it all. It was like being in a big wave for like a day, we were big wave surfers. I'm a chunky boy, and I've got a teddy bear, and I love that get this huge beast under control because the wind just activated it and it was like seriously strong but it was like when you're a child and you're in school and they get those huge pieces of fabric and people run up and they're like and you run up and you run in and you go whoa and you hide underneath it and then you run out you know and um, it was kind of like that how would you sum them up well, in, yeah. in a small collection of words <laughs> in, a, in a collection of words, without being too abstract, I would have to say that he's larger than life, very exuberant, high-spirited, and what has always compelled me about him yeah. is his sheer sense of wonder, which is just quite enchanting for me and inspiring. Who's the better fighter? It's got to be me, but obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but he allows the dissolve of walls which means that he's got a very open expanse and like way in which he interprets art and or sees art. Like we ultimately get stuck in holes of like this narrow-minded idea of like what art is and where it should be and, and he's got a very good understanding of it because you need to understand the absurdity which allows you to drop the seriousness of it and ultimately embrace this more uh, expanded understanding of what you're actually doing and like we both keep each other in check and we're also very direct. Like we both have different strengths, and we bring so much more to the table. <laughs> Obviously, we've uh, we've we've uh, butted heads like 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 rams, like Orkney rams, you know. <laughs> Gets too real, man. <laughs> the heroic act of life ever battling against entropy. Think big, think huge. Thus spoke Zarathustra. Watching you taking neon lighter off and table and drop it in a drink which is hidden in my jacket <laughs> and I thank it conscious of the harms of capitalism and that no matter how many lies things I possess narcissism isn't good there's no getting away from the marks inside choosing the righteous path is right volume of praise and volume of recognition means nothing nothing strive to be light and do the right thing 
and stuff. The thing I'm trying to figure out is just how I would explain the energy. Can you explain the energy? Can you explain the origins of the sun? <laughs> Don't think so. Explain the energy, man. Fucking tell me about the energy. It's fucking renewable, man. A sustainable source of infinite possibilities. It's like watching, like, the catalyst from the Big Bang when you saw particles <laughs> flying across on a molecular level, not quite knowing what to do, but when they came into connection within a distance of each other, they started to dance, and, like, cosmic vibrations created, and then they just exploded. And that's kind of what happens here. No preconceptions. You go in, and you just dissolve that wall, and suddenly you've just made magic, and then it's finished, and you're like, well, that happened, didn't it? Grandeur. <laughs> answer. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Wild animals in ties and suits, suited and booted, ready to dispute. You chat primo and I chat why. Unnatural, synthetic. I want stars. I want height and weight and rhythms that reverberate. Serenade, keep me fueled and powered till lights fade and lampposts change. Dictate directions, pathways to go. Love won't kill me. Ignorance will. Some of the most insignificant and ordinary things are fascinating, and we overlook them every day. And, and it means that we overlook wholesome interactions between people. All I would ever want is that it would change an individual's awareness of their own surroundings. The art for me is the way people engage in the space with each other. Art becomes more to life when people engage with it. Otherwise it becomes, it can just be an object. And so it's like, it's like particles. Molecules respond differently when they're being observed. And art is the same thing. And art allows for people to be inspired, to generate more ideas, for more things to happen. Because what have we got if we haven't got the element of the truth, you know? One attitude that I like to subscribe to is this Nietzschean idea of amor fati which is Latin for love the fate. And so it's this divine acceptance where you just accept your circumstances and the life situation at hand. You've dissolved all doubt, all anxiety. So what I'm saying is perpetuating really a total self-assurance and a total conviction. So you love the fate, you love the circumstances, you love where the cards have fallen. You love where you've slipped up because that slip up basically led to where you are now. And um, if you had to do life again, you wouldn't do anything differently because you've reveled in all of it and it's been the best thing ever. So that would be the most abundant thing for you to have to go through all that again because it was perfect. There's a few passages which I really like in Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Because in this book he famously says he proclaimed God is dead. But the God that he's talking about is a patriarchal God, which is the God that imposes limits. And what he suggests is the replacement for this patriarchal God is, a new, is the emerging of a new God which is the God which is inside oneself. But he says in that book, the only God which I would believe in is a God that knew how to dance. <laughs> we were on the food before he even hit it. Turns out it wasn't a wall. Shibuya. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unreal. That was mental. <laughs> it's, a, it's always a bit of a surreal experience to watch a film that you've made on your own, kind of in your room, and then like a whole collection of people are you come and watch it. Now that it's it's out. it's sick. I'm yeah. stoked. It's like I'm, yeah, fired up because it's just yeah. It's you a need, You need another whiskey highball. I think. Well, I do. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. Where's another whiskey highball? Where's, where's, high uh, where's um, Stacy? Well. <laughs> um, but no, no. Thank you so much for. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, yeah, thank perfect. you. Yeah, perfect, look at that. <laughs> We've got the stuff. Um, no, I'm glad you guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed it. 
Um, it's kind of really hard to summarize what James and Dan are about, but I hope that I mean, can the you film... explain the origins of the sun? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Woo! I hope think... the film managed to um, sort of shed a little bit of light on their wacky practice. And um, but yeah, That's so ridiculous, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absurd. Yeah. yeah, that's the beauty of it. Isn't it? Um, yeah. One, there's a few things that we should unpack. Safe house, the tent, yeah, the orange Ed, tent, Edwin which you might have seen in the film. That's a unique tent. It's not just a tent. It's uh, an artwork which is actually part of the RSA collection. Uh, the, it's a few different elements. We had the tent element with us. Uh, the work is called Safe House, and it's by Edward Somerton, RSA. Mm -hmm. He was a lecturer in Dundee. He's a great artist. I'm a big fan of Edward, Eddie. But he, yeah, so the tent element uh, stipulates, so it's the te there's the tent and then there's the manifesto. And the manifesto, the safe house manifesto stipulates that um, people on RSA residencies oh, RSA or members. RSA members, ac academicians, so-and-so, can use this if they're, all, if, maybe if they're down and out. Oh, oh thank you so much. That's, that's, that's what we need. need. <laughs> that's what we need. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Slides, boys. Cheers. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Is it right, mate? <laughs> were you guys the first to take Safe House out? Of we were the first. Yeah, to we take. Did, did you I'd take like care to of it? Something on record here. <laughs> we took pretty good care of it. Yeah, we did. J no. James may have damaged a couple of pegs here and there. Yeah, well, we yeah. replaced them. We got more pegs. There was a, a bracket which broke, which yeah. I had to buy and replace. But we did. Um, it, it it went really well. Like considering yeah. we woke up in you know sometimes in essentially a lake, surrounded by water with a moat, okay. and we're always drying. Always dry. Yeah. Safe house prevails. Mm -hmm. um, I I would like to say something on record here because I've had a guilty conscience since we went to oh Orkney. Uh -oh. I what said I approached uh, the RSA collections saying that I'd seen <laughs> safe house in the RSA Ages of Wonder exhibition. Um, and I'd read the manifesto and that I would like to, to use the tent. No one else had done it before, we were the first to use it. Yep. So that's a feat in itself, anyway. Um, I didn't go to that exhibition. <laughs> I, heard, I heard about the tent from a friend. <laughs> but I didn't, couldn't say, I didn't, I didn't think we would get it if yeah. I said that. Oh, know? my friend told me about this. Like, I, you know, you had to embellish things a little. Yeah, be there. Um, so, that's one thing I, I feel much better now. I'm really glad you got that off your chest. Off chest. Yeah, I was worried about you. You've been carrying that burden for years. Yep, it's been like an, an anvil. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I've been profoundly You look stressed. lighter. You look lighter three already. Years. You're glowing. I know. I was going to say in the um, in the film, we've obviously we've there's a lot of documentation of the first and second act, mm -hmm. but in the film, obviously I came halfway through the residency like one month in, or six weeks in to the eight-week residency and you guys did the, the third act right at the end just before you left yeah. Yeah. and there was only some image documentation but could you maybe unpack what happened on that third act and like because you said there was a mix of performance and well, it was artwork an and exhibition of sorts I think so it was a, it was a, so we continued to challenge what constitutes a play which is what we obviously were doing so we but put it underneath the umbrella very, of ironically probably the most with the third act because there was no acting no, it was a visual art there, exhibition. There a couple that of we poems, labeled maybe. Act three yeah. of our play. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't even do a play. Audience. <laughs> we still yeah, there was absolutely no play like characters. Features. Yeah. It was just an exhibition, and we had an opening. We might have read something. We had there was a couple of spoken word pieces, maybe. Yeah. But it wasn't. But it was more of a it, traditional it, exhibition. Yeah. I guess. Which we um, labeled as Act Three, act three of our play, which was quite nice as well because. I think the first act was, they were all so different. And then so it was quite a calm way to just yeah, I was, finish things off. I was pretty well. spent by the end yeah. as well. I didn't think I had the energy to do anything. Yeah. That was, that was a, 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 yeah, that was the best course of action, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it went well. But the, um, I was going to, uh, well, sorry to interject, yeah. but I was just going to say like, and post Orgony, obviously, this was shot a couple of years ago. And Dan, I'm interested to see, because obviously your work has developed absolutely loads since Orkney. And I, yeah. felt, I felt like at the time you were still experimenting with like yeah, so I many did. different mediums and stuff. Yeah. But like, you seem to have gotten to a little rhythm there, um, yeah, which so. is sick to see. So like, do you want to talk a little bit about like 
how your work stuff because it's it's like I, I still feel like it has a lot of the same origins as it did when we were in Orkney shooting like the the canvases yeah, you had most there. Definitely. Like, what what is how is it developed? Well, I think the I got into because I've I think the last two years has been interesting and I've had a lot of time. You know, I've been I started I became uh, the director for a studio in Liverpool, so one of Liverpool's lar largest artist led studios, and with that opportunity. I began running a space out of an old Marks and Spencers in Bootle, uh, which is just Bougie. a unicorn, yeah. <laughs> and um, but the I spent a lot of time, you know, at you know, could be like fifty hours a week sometimes, just like painting. And so I've got got really back into painting and doing large scale kind of pieces on wood. But I think some of the stuff, it it all kind of fell into the fact of like trying to make lots of work that I could put into an installation, which would then always come back to, we've always collaborated and, and had this kind of musical element with the work. So then whenever I want to put on a show, I'll have these elements. So I'll have, invite musicians down, I'll invite some spoken word poets down, and it becomes, it's not just, you know, it's not just like a show that I'm putting on. The whole point is that you have a bunch of people coming down, having a good time, getting to display their craft and what they go up to, and it's just, you know, it's like, it's for everybody, and um, but that's then, really cool. Yeah. yeah, but then with the work, like we have like Red Light Radio, which was you know the podcast which we came up with. Of course, yeah, we didn't talk about that. And part, then yeah. that sort of um, that's it's, it's on Spotify. Yeah, it's and on no, Spotify. No, sorry. Oh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. That would be nice. <laughs> it's on SoundCloud. Though. It's very you get on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> we but, keep it going. But the um, I kind of we might be able to upload develop that into an interdisciplinary platform now. So this is like. Yeah, red red light yeah. radio, and it's become Developed. become a project. Really, I recently got some funding for it, but the the idea is just to try and like link up people. So, like, if you you know visual artists, performance artists, um, you know whether you're in circus or you're a poet or you're a painter or a musician or whatever, the idea is to just like try and get people who might not usually fall in fall come across each other's path, like on like creative pathways, and then. Um, yeah, just like produce a bit of work together, you know. You you're, you have an event coming up in August in, in potentially. O August and September. A red light radio. Yeah, showcase. Wow. So six six new editions, but I think this is it, it, It's funny how what we were doing has just grown because in the same way you're in you're with theatre, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. how that's developed. This was my now. sort of so first foray involved. into theatre. Yeah. And that uh, really uh, opened the floodgates for exploring that. Type yeah. of thing in my yeah, work, so. I was going to say, James. Like, obviously, I spoke a little bit about your progression, but like, one of the things that I really loved in the in the film was asking like the kind of strange question of like your, the philosophy behind your work. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it's probably a bit of a difficult question, but like, how is has your philosophy remained the same um, through the last few years, or has it developed to kind of follow your work? That's a really difficult question. That's a really difficult question. <laughs> I like what I said in what, it, though. What I thought changed? I did quite a good job when I said the um, the in, the appreciation of the amorphity. Yeah. Uh, did you not get a tattoo as well? I do. I have it on my knees. Maybe we'll what, look at it afterwards. Whip yeah. them out later. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. If you want to have a look, approach me at the end. We can um, go in a back room Donations somewhere. are welcome. Oh, yes. <laughs> donations are welcome as well. But not for that. that <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. How's my fuck? I could. I really can't answer that. I don't know. I kind of. I. I do. What I do. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. I think Living the moment. my interests uh, have shifted. I think I've got a more succinct understanding, a clearer understanding of uh, what I want to do, and I've let possibilities die off. I think at that point in time, my practice was more. Um, yeah, it was broader. It was. It was less concise um so i've let some possibilities that possibilities die off and i know there's you know i i think i talked about your you or you spoke about recognizing the absurdity in relation to me yeah and i think that's that's something that i continue to be interested in and um yeah well there was something else i did want to say yeah, well, you've you've got your your different um, kind of yeah, theatre kind of acts humor. at the moment, like and, that's, and that's now becoming a bigger and bigger part. What of about practice. yourself, Glenn? Oh, yes. So yes. Like, yes. Too humble you know, to yes. talk yes. about. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> After seeing this here. masterpiece, this film, it really ought to be 
uh, showcased in some film festivals, I think. <laughs> I think it's one of the best films certainly I've ever seen. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe. We, uh, thank yeah. you so much. It's, but you, uh, I would like to hear like, where are you at now? Yeah, so where are you at, Glenn? Oh, yeah. Post film. Well, that, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, I mean, at the time, this was just, I think, a year or two after university that we all graduated um, around about the same time. Yeah. And um, you guys got this op um, brilliant opportunity to go to this residency. And throughout uni, I, I really wanted to be able to, well, I'm a, a documentarian at heart, so I really love telling stories. And um, I was always filming little c c things that we were doing, yeah. but nothing on Helped any sort of- a lot with projects. Like. <laughs> yeah. But, not, but nothing on this sort of scale. I mean, it was always just like, okay, film for viewers or come take some photographs. Yeah, do an installation the here, show do this or, there. And when you guys got this project, which I was like so unbelievably hyped for, I, I remember in the, in the WhatsApp group, just like explosions of <laughs> elated messages from everybody. Yeah. It was sick. Um, and it got me thinking. I was like, man, this is, this is the opportunity to tell that story um, yeah. of you guys and, and our friendship, I feel like. Just that energy that we have, and it's it's always good, it's always light, it's always fun, it's always playful, Easy. and yeah, with the film, uh, I really tried to like capture that. So coming up for the for the two days and shooting the thing, and then you know going to the pub, the flatty, I think it was, yeah. and um, drinking too many, too many mm. fireballs, <laughs> you know, and planning out all the stories, and then running down to the beach just before sunset with Dan to do some poetry or. You know, just these sort of things. It was just, it was just a wonderful experience, and um, yeah, I hope it, I hope it comes through in the film. But I think in terms of like how I've developed, I've, I've kind of started building my career as a, as a filmmaker and documentarian, but more specifically in like outdoor sports and things like that. But I've got this like kind of roots of the art background from come to art school and stuff like that. So it's, it's great to do a project like this, and it's. Um, yeah, inspired like inspired to do it um, more of this kind of thing because yeah, the last kind of couple of weeks of editing this thing together has, has been really really fun. So yeah, just get playful. Like it, it inspires you to like think outside the box. You know, like you guys are always thinking outside the box with your work. And then when I'm sit, sat editing it, I'm kind of thinking like you get into this routine of like oh you just do this and this and this and then you put the video out and it's cool, it's a good video. But with something like this, I was I was totally free to. To essentially edit however I want, use any music I want, you know, the pacing, the the overlays, you know, and like one bit that I thought was great was <laughs> your absurd answer for um, <laughs> oh my God. explaining the energy, which I we, still, we I still <laughs> Alex like Alex Turner, Liam Gallagher, some sort of yeah, horrifying. and you and you've got these like aviator glasses on, and we were just recording voiceover, <laughs> yeah. but I had to put the shot of you with the aviators on with so your with it. your bottle of beer yeah. to oh just really God. like see exactly how mental that was that's that is a great um sort of uh what's the word microcosm of like your your kind of ex exuberant thing you know the reason that i i really enjoy your company because I think you come up with that kind of shit I don't, all, <laughs> I can, all, all i can hear about is like so well that inspiring. happened going over and over and over <laughs> my head just, I mean, it's just kind of going and going and it's just this like kind of spontaneous prose piece where i'm like what the hell did he just say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's absolutely brilliant. It batters my head too. Um, so yeah, to, so trying to like find the visuals to go over the top of that, I had to, had to think big. Yeah, the particles so, are excellent. <laughs> yeah, so Love that. No, that, was really, that was really cool. And, yeah. um, one of the guys that was also credited <laughs> in, the, in the film... Can you explain um, the origins of the sun? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah, one of the other guys that was credited for editing is, is my uh, kind of business partner now. And this was one of the first projects that we actually did together, um, a guy called Max. He's, he's also quite an expressive character. It's reg regrettable he couldn't be here. He's great. Pardon? Yeah. It's regrettable he couldn't be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's currently out um, in Europe doing some film work. But he's, um, he's here in spirit. So he actually helped with the first edit of this uh, way back when. Which was insane. Which, which was sick. Yeah, yeah. Cool to see. So. It's actually sick that we're working together now because we've just we've just like hit it off in a really yeah, good way. You guys did them really well. Um, but yeah, I mean, how much time have we got left? It'd be good to open up the questions, questions if to... anyone has any. Yeah, so we've got about various... five minutes left. If anyone wants to ask a question, any questions? We have a microphone um, from our glamorous yes, assistant. Yes, we have. <laughs> and but we, we need the microphone. You know, it doesn't it doesn't go. work if this you... is this is a good opportunity. This is, this, this is experience. quite an quite an experience, quite yeah. an opportunity for us. So you know, we want to utilize all parts. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you tell me a little bit about Club Peanut? 
Yes, well, I can. Tina, I can too put, graphic, oh, fantastic. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, or, Nick or, Gordon. Oh, where would, where the man, the legend himself. Un, yeah, Nick let's Go hear about Nor Nick Gordon. So, Nick Gordon is an artist from Stromness. And he's, he's lovely. He's better than Nathan Coley. Yeah, he's 100% superior. But he, um, Nick was a good a pal of ours who we met in the Wash Studios and has an affinity with skate fish. I think this is the sort of mark of his whole practice, our skate fish. Uh, we won't go too into that, but we we got really, we became really good friends with Nick. And, you know, Stromness is a small place, and after the, you know, the local pub, the flat, he's closed, there's nowhere really to go. That's, that's a big loss. That's a blow. And this is where Club Peanut came into Yes, it. so, um, oh, I thought you meant, I misunderstood you there. Yeah, I yeah you were it's saying, not closed for, well, it's closed forever now, it's, it, but. Oh, it's, so it is. Fucked. It's Club, <laughs> yeah. it's club oh, Peanut. Yeah, that is a blow. Yeah, no, you're meaning that, like after yeah, like midnight yeah, when it shuts there's no closed oh, right. doors. There's no clubs in Orkney. Yeah. But, well, there is. There's one club. There's Club there's Peanut. There's Club Peanut. And what Club Peanut is, is, is it Manus's house? Yeah. Is that disclosing no, too it, much? It's <laughs> Nick Gordon's house. Is it, was it Nick, oh, it was it's Nick, Nick Gordon's, Gordon's house? His is Club Neep. <laughs> so that's it. So there's Club <laughs> Peanut and there's Club Neep. Club Peanut is uh, hence Nick Neep Gordon's and house. From the and film. Hence, hence, you if know, we could quite summarize the, the it enigmatic in two words. moment where I said, if I could sum up Orkney in a root vegetable and a nut, it would be a, a neep, neep and, and a, a peanut. peanut. <laughs> so... Well, there so is, there's a closure. Backstory. Yeah, closure. Essentially, uh, it's the after hours of of Stromness. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and, it's it, and it goes off. These people. It's insane. Like, are, are, you know, these people are incredible. You could walk down the street, and then people would, it, you, you know, there was a crowd of us, and then uh, it was fle fledglings, boozy. fledglings coming seen, from the other pubs. It was as hell. You know, you've got like people, you know, you've never even seen in your life, yeah. and they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah. here? Four, four, you're getting up, yeah. and then following you through the street. <laughs> And you're, you're like chatting to them. Four like, middle-aged Welshmen in a fucking... Can't believe that this has been going <laughs> yeah, on yeah, underneath yeah. their nose for 40 years. Uh, oh, my God. Asking yeah, when Club the next was is hilarious. It's, it's obviously so fun, they, some fun yeah, memories. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> fun memories, fun memories, yeah. yeah. So it was that, nice to see Cassia Dodman as well, someone that, one of our contemporaries yeah, from Dundee. Also a great artist. Great artist, yeah. yeah. Um, um, she's, any more she's questions from, from yeah. people? We have... Yes. Oh, here oh, we go. Yeah. So, so just to repeat that question, um, James got rescued by an angel. Well, James and Dan got rescued by an angel and yeah, yeah and it, on it the island hopping. Questioning how it want Murray wants to hear more about how we got rescued by the angel. Well, um, yep. So we were stuck in this in the uh, ferry port in the hut in the ferry port, and there was no scope to leave. So obviously we were getting the winds had cancelled everything. And, um, yeah. What was the next? In the next instance, yeah. So S Kerry, Kelly, 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 Kelly appeared. Kelly was um, the local uh, she uh, drove uh, the woman bus. who drives the bus for the school children in Sandy, and uh, she'd somehow got wind. I'd, I'd, I'd oh, I, it's a small place. So, oh, James, you had called James, her. James okay. spent well, most of his time working out, <laughs> I, and I did the logistics. And so I tracked down the uh, oh, that's right the enough. minivan. <laughs> right enough, you saw it. You saw how, how how ripped he was looking in the video. It takes a lot of care, but the um, we managed to contact the fet, the uh, the bus. Is that how it played out? So Kelly yeah, I've, came I've and picked us detail. up after a couple of hours, Kelly and then we jumped on. And Kelly, you know, she took a shining to us. She was she was lovely, and she and said, it wasn't because we were sat there with our tops off. No, 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 nothing. No, 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 nothing we were nothing of that nature. Two young men with vigor. No, 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 no. No. So we went to, um, ah, yeah, she, she picked us up. She says, well, you're going to need to, you know, find something. You're going to need to stay another night because you can't leave. Um, there's, you know, there's no ferries. So she says, it was, when we, we, we sorted that out, did we? We got this, we got, we contact the hostel, got the hostel. But the point yeah. is, she dropped us. She says, well, listen, we'll just take you over to this pub. We'll drop you off and I'll come and meet you later on. So she drops us off at the pub. We played pool, drink yeah. pints. Had the Sandy um, stack, the the version of the Big Mac, mate, on Sandy. Unbelievable, fucking yeah. recommend it. And there was there was a there was a there was a, a parrot. A there parrot. was a parrot, yeah. Um, it was the pub. There's maybe two pubs in Sandy, but this pub, maybe it was a hotel as well, owned by a London, a family from London. Yeah, moved to Sandy. Uh, the guy had a parrot, and the parrot was like a shadow, followed him everywhere. Um, anyway, so we're there, <laughs> sinking pints. The day goes, I'm getting gradually worse at pool. Um, <laughs> and then, yep, Kelly comes. With says, her partner oh, you know, and her son. Did she, she, 
treat us to dinner? No, she no, no, took, no. So we she, had the stack. That's we had right. a few drinks with Kelly, and yeah. then she took us back to. We went back to her house. That's right. You know, had a few drinks. Incredible with collection her. of guitars. Dan was shredding. Yeah. Um, and we just and then we got a lift. Nice music, yeah. <laughs> this very boozy night got driven. Um, but to the, the thing hostel. is, so what was interesting about this like link up was the fact that we we went to her house. She was really hospitable, really lovely. Dropped us off, and then the next day we went and had Sunday roast with them. Yes, she invited us to have Sunday roast with them, and we had which some was food. Lovely. And she introduced us to Tim, her friend Tim, and what was Tim was the partner of Maxwell uh, Davis. Peter Maxwell Davis, a composer. Um, so as a consequence of all this of missing of, of, the ferry, of Kelly of missing the ferry, getting introduced to Kelly, she then, you know, looked kind of took took us under her wing. Introduced us to this guy Tim. Tim says, "You know, come to my come to my my home." And he yeah. he, he inherited Peter Maxwell Davis, the composer's estate. Um, and so he gave us a tour. Gave us a tour, and there was there was you know there was it was surreal. There was like John Bellany paintings everywhere. There was just as if they meant nothing. There was, uh, was just Golden really, Globe really nominations, quaint, quaint and, <laughs> just yeah. like over there. You know the what place, I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, crazy. And yeah. then we, and then he took us to this point on the island, which, if you looked true north, it was like there's nothing else. You know, it's just the edge of the world. It's just like so. it falls off. Amazing. Yeah, this was. So so she was an angel. That's our angel. Yeah. Yeah. And her. Oh, I feel bad though because I James. called. Um, I was. James, I was quite drunk. I James forgot. Had I got, a few I was, too her many name was beers. Kelly. I was calling her Carrie. Her and then son kept calling was called her son by his pet name. But her pet name for him was Chester. Not to be used to like by a, a wider public, you know what I mean? And I didn't know her partner's name, and I was calling him the wrong name. So I was calling everyone the wrong name, and there's so it was so much generosity. Yeah, and I was just totally blowing it. Yeah, I really yeah, that happens. That's amazing. I think we've got time for uh, just like one more question, and then that probably we have to wrap it up. We're probably gonna get kicked out. So, does anyone else have a, a question? And if not, I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. I've forgotten it. Um, it was a good one as well. Would you think about doing this again? What the the film? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, a but sequel. I would I would do a, a sequel. sequel yeah. if, if we all go to Orkney, I would uh, I would happily oblige. I would okay, book some time out. Act five. Again. Act Act five. Yeah, act, act five can first. be a film. Well, I mean, no, we should probably just film. talk about Act four quickly because that's tomorrow. So yeah. that's that's exciting. Yes. So what so what is what is happening tomorrow? So two p.m. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, um, that's today. 2 p.m. 1 p.m. <laughs> we are utilizing our work in the lower galleries in the Scotland Small Exhibition as props, backdrop, and yep. stage for Act Four of our ongoing it's a play. Of works. Um, th I would describe the play uh, <laughs> as a stage act of performing alter egos with passages of experimental performance. I think that summarizes you. That's amazing. Yeah. And that, that's upstairs in the space yes. where you guys I have you, safe I hope you're available. There will be yeah, more whiskey around, highballs for everyone. Um, and if you're not, then, I mean, the show's open today. You can go and check out yeah, some you, of the awards. Yeah, you should definitely visit the Scotland Small Exhibition if you haven't already, because it's a great exhibition. And as we s don't know if we did mention, we have safe houses there. We were able to um, borrow safe house again. Eddie Somerton's tent but yeah. the whole the whole package is there the chest which it comes in is there as well and that says on the you can see it on the the manifesto on the reverse of the lid yeah the uh manifesto so yeah Brilliant. please go and give it a visit give it a look yeah it's a good, yeah. Uh, amazing exhibition amazing exhibition to be part of yeah and it's been great to reinvigorate the to Fenris with up, Ragnar yeah. Thorfinn engine very excited to do that tomorrow Brilliant. Well, we see. I mean, thank you guys so much for coming along today and give up for the, the artists here. Thank you very much, Glenn, <laughs> for producing this incredible It's all video. about Glenn Thompson and yeah, his amazing is all film. About Glenn. This is literally all about Glenn Thompson. We're Glenn just, was we're always a superior artist. We're just here for you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you want to give us well. a bow? <laughs> Maybe later. About, Maybe yeah. later. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming, guys. Thank yeah, you, uh, we'll be hanging really around outside. So oh, of course. And James wants some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maintaining an artistic artist. practice of this nature is it's expensive. It's expensive. Um, 
If you'd like to make a donation, we have the hat here, and we'll split the proceeds uh, in three equal parts. Uh, if you so haven't got any cash, we can give you our sort code in the bank. <laughs> yeah, uh, a sort code, code and a code. That's We're what flexible. it was all coming we'll to. Yeah. cash. Yeah. Don't, Don't worry about that. It doesn't that. really matter if it's a if it's a digital payment or or if it's, it's a watch or even Don't mind. A, a wedding ring, you know, or gravy granules. Yeah. We're all gravy granules, whatever floats your boat. He paid on. He when I was, I, we, I've been in Liverpool for the last three days with Dan, um, developing with our fourth instalment of our pay. And on the bus from Bootle to uh, Sands <laughs> Hills, he paid Dave with gravy, gravy granules. granules. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. Is that the currency then? Yeah, I'm going to leave that. <laughs> Where yeah. it lies. Thanks. Thank all you right. very much. Well, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a good day. Cheers. Bye, bye.